by the end of this video, we're going to be able to open up our menu, go to our inventory, move our items around into whatever slot we want, go to our settings, click save, shut down our whole game. What? Open it back up, please. I miss my items and their slots. When we press play again, open our menu, go to our inventory, and they've saved their positions. That's right, we're adding inventory save states. So when we check out our save data, we'll have inventory save data with item IDs and slot indexes. Very cool, very fancy. So first of all, we've got a couple prefabs sitting in our assets folder. I'm just gonna right click and go create folder and create a new one for our prefabs. Hold down control on three of these and drag them in just so it's nice and tidy. Now that's out of the way, let's look at our plan. So getting started, first of all, what we're gonna do is create an item class to add to our existing item prefabs. In our nice prefab folder that I just made, we have our item and our heart item. If you didn't see how to make these, you can check it out in our previous video. And then carry on from there as we click on our base item, scroll down to the bottom and click add component. We'll click new script, name this item, click create and add. Then we can double click on this script to open it up. And inside here, we're gonna keep it real simple for now and add more later on, where all we'll need is a public int called ID. Cool, easy so far, let's keep going. So back in Unity, you can see our ID is set to zero. We're gonna keep it at zero as we're gonna add auto incrementing to make sure these IDs are unique for each item. If we check back in our prefabs folder, my heart item I created as a variant of this base item. So you can see this item script was also attached. But cool, let's go back to our plan and see that next in our list, we're gonna make an item dictionary. We're gonna use this to store our item prefabs, auto increment our IDs, like I said, and use it for item retrieval. So other scripts can grab our ID items based on the ID. Cool, so to keep all our management stuff under a clean place, I'm gonna put our item dictionary underneath our game controller. So I'm gonna right click on game controller and go create empty and call this item dictionary. Then on our item dictionary, I'm gonna click add component, new script and call it item dictionary. Double click on this to open it up. And in here, we're gonna want a public list of items which I'll call our item prefabs. This list will manually populate and include all items that we want in our game. Then to have these stored by their unique IDs, I'm gonna create a private dictionary and in the triangle brackets, type int comma game object and name this item dictionary. If you haven't used a dictionary before, basically it's a list of whatever you want in the second field to be stored by the key of the first field. So we're gonna store our item prefabs game objects by their ID. So cool, instead of using start, I'm gonna switch this to use awake. And as you can see, this is called when the script instance is being loaded. Awake is called sooner than start. And really we'll want our dictionary to run before anything else. So next let's initialize a new item dictionary by going item dictionary equals new dictionary int game object. Then we're going to auto increment our IDs. We're gonna type for int i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than item prefabs dot count semicolon i plus plus and say if item prefabs square brackets i does not equal null then item prefabs square brackets i dot id equals i plus one so our ids will always start as one and increment up now we can populate our item dictionary so we'll go for each item item in item prefabs we'll set our item dictionary square brackets item dot id so we're setting the key to be the item's ID and set this to be equal to our item.game object. Next, we're not gonna want this update function, but we are gonna wanna write an item retrieval function. So let's go public game object, get item prefab, and we'll pass in the item ID. Now you may think I'm about to write this. This is how you grab the ID. But what if someone passes in 78 and 78 doesn't exist in here? This is gonna crash. And we don't want crashes. So instead we can use item dictionary dot try get value, pass in the item ID that we're trying to get, then type comma out game object prefab. This way it won't crash and will instead give us a null game object. So we can say if our prefab equals null, we can handle this by logging out a warning and say item with ID, item ID was not found in the dictionary. Now I'll teach you something else cool. To get this parameter to appear in the middle of this string, you could do this, which is quite ugly, and compound it with 
pluses, or you can do it the cool way and at the beginning of your string, outside the quote mark, put a dollar sign, then put curly braces around your parameter. Now, whatever we pass in this parameter will appear in our log message. Very cool. Last thing to do at the very bottom, just return our prefab. So cool, our item dictionary is all done. If we go back to Unity, you can see we've got a empty list of item prefabs on our item dictionary script. I'm gonna open up my prefab folder, click back on my item dictionary and drag my base item into this list and our heart item. Great, next, we're gonna to wanna to write a class for our inventory save data. What we're gonna to need to want to know is our item ID and our slot index. So in my scripts folder, where we have our save data, I'm gonna right click in here and go create C sharp script, call it inventory save data. Double click on this. Then like with our save data, we're gonna want this to be system serializable. So at the top, add square brackets and type system serializable, delete, update, and start. And like I said, we'll want a public int for our item ID and a public int for our slot index. This slot index, is going to be the index of the slot where the item is placed within our inventory. So for example, if I save this now, our heart potion would be in number two and our normal potion would be in number one. And that's it for our save data. So cool, very simple. What's next? Why, of course, we have to add our inventory save data to our normal save data class. So back in Unity, inside our scripts folder, we'll find our save data script double click on it and as we have our player position our map boundary we also want our public inventory save data we'll name this inventory save data cool very easy step let's check what's next so next up we're going to want to add to our inventory controller our existing one that we wrote in our last video we're going to need to add some functions for getting the inventory items and seeing what slot they're in when we save and then setting our inventory items into certain slots for loading so back in Unity, we select our game controller. This is where I've placed my inventory controller script. I'm gonna double click on this to open it up. And in here, I'm gonna want a private reference to our item dictionary. I'm keeping this private, so we can't accidentally edit our item dictionary. We want this to always stay the same. And at the top of our start, I'm gonna go item dictionary equals find object of type and pass in item dictionary. So we can grab our existing item dictionary from our scene. Now below our start, I'm gonna write a public function where we're going to get a list of inventory save data. Now I'll call this get inventory items. So this is what our save controller is gonna call to get the data needed for saving. Now that I've written this, I realized if you just go back to our save data, I messed up and this should be a list of inventory save data. As our inventory save data is item IDs and slot indexes, we want many of them, not just one. Silly me. Cool. So save data needs a list of inventory save data. Okay, back to inventory controller. Let's create our list of inventory save data. I'll simply call this our inv data. So it's not too long. We'll have this equal a new list of inventory save data. Next, we're gonna to wanna to say for each transform slot transform in our inventory panel dot transform. So for every slot in our inventory panel, I wanna grab the slot game object. So slot slot equals slot transform dot get component and pass in slot. And we wanna grab this slot because inside our slot, we can say if slot dot current item does not equal null. So we have an item in an inventory slot. We can grab the item. So item item equals slot dot current item dot get component item. Now we can finally set our inventory data by typing dot add brackets, new inventory save data, curly braces, and set the item ID to equal our item dot ID, of course, and our slot index to equal our slot transform dot get sibling index. Now you may be thinking, what does get sibling index mean? As always, Unity documentation is much better at explaining than I am. So get sibling index gets the index of a game object in conjunction to other game objects on the same level. So if they all share their parent, it's where they sit in the sibling hierarchy. And if that still doesn't make sense in our UI, if I show you on our inventory page, you can see we've got all these different slots. They are all parented to the inventory page object. So this will be slot number three, four, five, six. So cool. That is what get sibling index does, very handy. And now we need to return our inventory data at the very bottom. Great, so that's what we need for saving. Now for loading, we're gonna need a public void set inventory items. And in here we pass in our list of inventory save data. 
So in here, first what we're going to do is actually destroy. So first what we're going to do is clear out our game objects entirely. So first what we're going to do is clear out our inventory panel. Slots and all. So we're going to say for each transform child in inventory panel dot transform destroy child dot game object. Then I'm going to create some new slots by going for brackets int i equals zero. i is less than slot count, which we initialized above in the previous video, then i plus plus. In here, all we want to say is instantiate slot prefab, comma, inventory panel dot transform, which sets the inventory panel to the parent of these slot prefabs. And then we want to populate our slots with saved items. So we're going to go for each inventory save data, in, oops, I haven't named our parameter, call this inventory save data. So for each data in inventory save data, we'll say if data.slot index is less than our slot count, so it can actually fit inside our inventory slots, and we haven't saved something silly, we'll go slot slot equals inventory panel dot transform dot get child, and we can pass in our data dot slot index to grab the correct child and the correct slot and type dot get component slot to grab this object. Next, we want to get the game object of our item prefab out of our item dictionary. So equals item dictionary dot get item prefab and pass in our data dot item ID. See, it's all coming together now, right? It's all making sense. Cool. So if our item prefab is not equal null, then another game object of item equals instantiate item prefab comma slot dot transform. So we're creating a new object of this item prefab from the item dictionary and sticking it inside one of our slots because of course you could have multiple of one item. Next to make sure this is positioned correctly in our slot we'll go item dot get component rect transform dot anchored position equals vector two dot zero and finally set our slot dot current item to equal our item. Amazing! So now, of course, because when we load our game, we are now creating our slots and populating them. Up the top of this inventory controller, we used to do this in our start. So if you're brave enough, you can delete this. Or if you want to keep a hold of this code just in case, you can click this little button at the top, which says comment out selected lines. I'll leave it commented out for now. So great, that was a lot of business. Don't worry, we're almost done. Back in our plan, finally, we want to add to our existing save controller. Of course, we need to add to our saving and our loading. So in Unity on my game controller, I have my save controller script. I'm going to double click on this and at the top underneath save location, I'm going to want a private inventory controller, which I'll call inventory controller. And in our start, I'm going to want to set our inventory controller to equals find object of type inventory controller. Cool. So nice and easy. Just watch how easy this is in our save data. After our map boundary line, I'm going to go comma inventory save data equals inventory controller dot get inventory items brackets. And that's it. That's your inventory save data done. Easy, right? Now get ready for the next bit. Even easier. Well, it's about the same. In our load game, at the bottom inside the if braces, I'm going to go inventory controller dot set inventory items. And inside the brackets, I'm going to pass in save data dot inventory save data. And we're done. That's it. It like comes out of nowhere, right? You do all this setup and then suddenly you use it and it's like, ah, oh, that was so easy. That was worth the effort. Cool. Nice. Let's go into Unity and test it out. So all the setup we need here is our item dictionary with our two items and make sure your prefabs have the item scripts assigned to them. You can see now our items have auto incremented from the last time I played my game. So cool. Let's press play. And if I press tab and open my inventory, you can now see we've got no items in here because we clear this out to be able to test this as I have no way of picking up items or getting them yet. I'll add that soon in our game. If we open our UI and open your inventory page, you can see all your slots here. To test this, you can drag your items from your prefab folder straight into one of these slots and they should appear nicely in your screen. So I'll drag these into some random slots and they become fully interactable just as always. So let's place our item somewhere we'll be able to remember. Hide in the bottom left. Cool. Save this in our settings. Oh, and you can see we've got an error on the side here. It says you're trying to create a mono behavior using the new keyword. I have messed up. A handy way I'll show you how I debug this. Double click on this error message. It'll show you it's saying I'm creating a new inventory save data and it's saying it's a mono behavior. 
we go to our inventory save data, you can see this is of type mono behavior. We don't need this to be mono behavior. We want it just to be a class. My bad. Easy fix back in Unity. Let's close this back down, press play again, and restart our test. So I'll open our inventory again, drag in our items, one heart, one green potion, drag them to our nice spots. In fact, I'll go to different spots now. Go to settings, click save. We got no error this time. Of course, our items are still there if we open and close the tab, but we want to actually quit out of our game. So unplay your game, then click play again, press tab, inventory, okay, and they're gone. I was expecting this, don't worry. We've got an error. Object reference is not set to an instance. So what this is saying is our item dictionary is null. Now this is happening because our save controller loads up faster than our item dictionary called set inventory items, and then our item dictionary is null. So we need to make sure our scripts run in the right order. If we go back to Unity, in the top left, you can click on edit, project settings, and in your project settings list here, there's one called script execution order. In here, what's currently listed is all the Unity business that we don't really care about too much, and none of our own scripts. So down the bottom right, you can see there's a plus. If we click on this, what we want is item dictionary to load first. Next, we want our inventory controller to be able to initialize this item dictionary and have it in its file. And then we want our save controller to run as they're dependent on one another. This is a very important screen when you get into more complex games as execution orders can make everything break just like this. So if we click apply, close this down. And now if I press tab and open our inventory, our items are finally there and we have no error messages. Cool, let's move them around. Tab, tab, they're still there. Click save, close debug, press play again. Tab, inventory, and there's our items, it's working. I wanna take a look at our save data in its file and see the JSON formatting of our saving. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint just below our save location and then press play in our game. So when this hits this breakpoint, I can hover over our save location, copy the value and paste it into the header bar, removing that save data.json so I can see where it's saved. Now I can open this in Notepad and take a look inside. So we can see our player position, our map boundary, and now our inventory save data. We can see we've got our two item IDs and our two slot indexes. Very cool. And that's how I save inventory states. And speaking of saving, if you also wanna save yourself some time, you can go onto my Patreon and grab all these scripts for just five pound. And yes, that includes every other script I've ever written on this channel. You're right, that is a good deal. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. I will finally be placing items on the ground for our little frog to be able to pick up. That way we don't have to hard code and fake our inventory anymore. And after that, I'll make the hotbar and then we can use the items. Ooh, so exciting, so cool. Cool, thanks. See you in the next one. Bye.